there. I need to uh, uh, introduce uh, the, Doug Varney, the Commissioner of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services, which most of you already know, but it's been my pleasure to work with him not only on the video this year, but on many other projects. And you know that he's, he's in the trenches. He's been in the trenches, <clears throat> but he's certainly in the trenches for us now at a state level. And we all, I think, have appreciated his hard work on the behalf of this field. We appreciate him very much, and we want to, we very much wanted to make him a part of our 40th anniversary celebration. So thank you for coming, Commissioner. Thank, thank you, Mary Linda, for those uh, kind comments. It's really uh, great to be here this evening, see so many of you, and many of you have been friends for a long time. I knew Bob when he was the executive director. I actually worked with him. Um, and Randy Jesse uh, had a first discussion about Tadis, really, with him. Ron Stone was a close friend of mine. Um, so it's, it's kind of nice to reminisce and think back four de decades, not when I was getting out of elementary school. No, I wish it were sometimes, but uh, no, it's, um, it's great to be here with this celebration with you all. Our department, I hope everybody in this room knows, has been a partner with this organization since the very beginning, and this group of people I work with over here, I love working with these people over here and what they do. Their hearts is in the same place as your all's are, and it's great that we're all in this great enterprise really together. Um, I think for me, to be honest with you, in some of my looking back, in the 90s particularly, I didn't know if we would ever get to where we are today, that we'd ever have a room full of people, we'd ever have judges involved in the way you are, Judge Sloan, or Representative Farmer, like you and your colleagues. And, and addiction has become a bipartisan issue, which is so wonderful because things can move forward in ways it's just not possible if it's split along, you know, partisan lines. I never thought that everybody in our, well, I think everybody, almost everybody, surely everybody in our state, in our community, gets addiction finally. Finally, that it's more than just bad decisions or a moral question or some failing, that, that uh, it's more than that. Treatment works, recovery's possible. We can't, we can't afford throwing away people. I saw so many tragedies, you know, and we were going down this path that was really dark and we've still got a ways to dig ourselves out. I'm so proud of in our state some of the things we've done. Your all's advocacy and focus has been really key in all of that. I hope you know that. But you know, to look at all of this differently, criminal justice reform, our governors championed that. I was privileged to work part of that. Linda, you were part of that. That we're not just locking people up and throwing them away. And not only is it not the moral thing to do, it doesn't even make sense economically. We were in Marie, Marie and I today with Judge Norman, Seth Norman. I think, you know, Judge, you know him. He's like this, my idol. He's in his 80s, and he's still out there. Just like the day after he started in recovery, he's just as passionate today as he was then about helping people change their lives and move forward. But I really do, and until I, and I, I hope those of you who know me well, know one of the reasons I came into this job really is about all this and wanting to do something to make a difference around all so we could move away from just where we were and into a place of hope and change and, and the society and uh, money, faith-based organizations looking at this differently. Not just the few that had been in, or walked in those shoes, but gathering other people together. Because it is gonna take not just treatment, which we're all engaged in and part of, education, prevention, but it's gonna, it's gonna require a cultural change at a very fundamental level if we're gonna to get to where we really need to be like Becky's talking about, that addictions treated like diabetes or any other kind of chronic illness challenge that people have in their lives. None of that, we would never have gotten here if some of the people in this room had not done what you did. And, and it's like your second job, I know, and I've been very active myself in a similar organization, and um, like Randy, you in this one, uh, it's like a second job. You know, for many of you. You got your job, your day job, and then you got this helping Mary Linden and the other your colleagues focus our energy and attention and our hearts in the right direction. And it's never easy because you got tough work. 
being down in the trenches, digging ditches and being in the trench work is trench work. It's, it's, it's hard work and it takes a lot out of you. I'm always amazed and grateful, though, that in my life I've been able to be part of a group like this that can live a life of meaning and purpose and make a difference and be part of that. Even when you have disappointments, recovery isn't a straight path. Sometimes even the people we're closest to, and I've had own experience in my own family, people I wanted to help the most, I couldn't. Uh, but thousands and thousands and thousands of people across this state from Memphis to Mountain City now have a chance at a life. Mothers and fathers can be proud again. Uh, young people can have a future because of the work that this organization and all you people and the other people you work with, what you do every day. It's, I'm really committed, our department is committed, and all these folks, uh, these great people I work with are committed to helping. There, there's just so much as government you can do around advocacy. It really takes grassroots stuff, and that's what this organization helps do. And the truth of it is we've been challenged on this side of the behavioral health continuum with that advocacy effort because traditionally the AA people didn't do that kind of thing. They did one-on-one -on -one stuff. But organizations like TADIS, if you're, if you're going to be able to influence public policy at a community level, state level, national level, you gotta take that second job on that nobody pays you to do, but you show up, you keep showing up, and that light is in your eyes and your passion is in your heart for what you're doing. So really, thank you so much for letting me and the people I work with be part of this this evening. Uh, congratulations on four decades. I'm so, what was it? Six angry men in Chattanooga? Six angry men in Chattanooga. Probably had no idea. Were, were you one of those, Randy? Or? <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Um, they probably had no idea how far this would come. And it, what it would mean at really crucial times in our evolution as a state and as a society and a community that people came together with one voice of reason, with information, data, and stories uh, to help sway people's hearts to move in the right direction. So Mary Lyndon, congratulations to you and your staff. My personal favorite was the coconut cake. <laughs> Although I'm partial to green beans too, and I don't get those that much, southern green beans. Uh, you don't have to chew that hard on them, do you? They just kind of melt in your mouth. Um, and that, but it's a great event, uh, wonderful, wonderful evening. Thanks for letting us be part of it. And uh, Barry, thanks for your leadership this year for this organization. I guess John's the new chair. I know you all continue to move forward. There's a big agenda coming up with the General Assembly. I'm really excited about the three stars process. Um, you know, our governor is very much, I, I, I so much wish the Insure Tennessee would have moved forward because of what we desperately need uh, is people to be able to access treatment who want to change their life. And, uh, you know, we think it could be as many as 300,000 people in our state, one way or another. And we reach, what is it, probably 14,000, mostly with, you know, the federal money we get and leveraging a lot of low-cost, high-impact things. But, Representative, thank you for being here, sir. I loved what he said. Uh, Marie was asking me. She, she quizzes everybody. <laughs> She's great. She's a social worker at art. Why he's doing this and what he said. And I thank you so much for that. It's really around thinking about the NOS babies and addiction and wanting to make a difference uh, in that area. Thank you for doing that and being part of this. But, you know, January will be here before we know it. Nathan will be over there running around. <laughs> all of you all be over there influencing hearts and minds to do the right thing and keep this momentum. We've got great momentum, I think, between the prescription for success. Incidentally, Beck, we have a tremendous partnership in our state between law enforcement, public health, the advocacy organizations. Um, it, it's almost unbelievable when I talk to my colleagues in D.C. when we meet together about what, how fortunate we are. Uh, but I hope we can all bring that to bear and help Chairman Sexton or <laughs> whatever it takes to get the resources so people can um, access treatment. But again, thanks for letting us be a part of this, and congratulations, 40 years, four decades. Thank you.